Welcome back to Midpoint. Chairman of the Alliance for Innovation and Infrastructure, also formerly with the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, which all means he knows everything there is to know about the Keystone Pipeline. We're going to put him on the spot right now. Brigham McCown joins us. Brigham, let's get back to this now. And th the time that we have, I really want to spend on boiling down to some of the facts here because there may be nothing that has been more convoluted and maybe more bad information that's been given over the past six years than the Keystone Pipeline. Let's start right out with the job factor because this is the one I hear all the time. We hear things like 3,900 jobs, 120,000 jobs. I saw a report last night that said in the end, only 35 full-time jobs. When it's all said and done, please tell us what the truth is. Absolutely. Well, the, the State Department's report says that the construction jobs created by Keystone uh, will number some 40,000, direct and indirect. Because you have to remember, Ed, that goes back to the people that are making the parts, the people that are excavating, the, the welders, the different trades and crafts. And that's why part of President Obama's base, the labor unions, have been hot on him to approve it. You know, I, I hear this argument sometimes when it comes to highways, roads, bridges. You say, well, you know, these are construction jobs. They're only temporary jobs. Ultimately, everybody's job, including a senator, a congressman, you, me, the president, they're all temporary jobs if you want to look at it that way. <laughs> you have spent time in the broadcast industry. Uh, but let's go ahead and make the point here that when it's done, when the pipeline is finished, construction's done, everything's out, machines all been pulled away, we're probably not talking more than 50 or 60 full-time jobs, correct? Actually working on the pipeline? We're probably, I would estimate, anywhere between 50 and 100 because you have to have contractors that do the maintenance, repair the right of way. But it's much more than just that, Ed. And if you look at the existing Keystone that's already been built, the tax revenue that comes down the line county by county provides money that is then used for what you know, Washington DCers call indirect jobs. Sure, are they directly employed by the pipeline company? No, but does it does it go to growing the economic pie? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and those are numbers that the, the opponents don't want to talk about. The numbers I want to talk about is that this is a state-of-the-art, most studied pipeline in American history, and ultimately uh, the, the, the crude oil has to get from point A to B. And my point all along has been, Let's get it there as safely as possible. And clearly, that's in a brand new pipeline. Then what about the safety here? Because an average of 97,000 barrels of petroleum and other hazardous liquids are spilled every year, or I should say, spilled each year in pipeline accidents over the last decade. That right. comes from the Department of Transportation. So what is it that makes us believe that this pipeline is going to be safe and won't spill oil in perhaps even the aquifer in Nebraska that it passes over? Right, well, with respect to the aquifer, we have thousands of miles of pipeline in the aquifer. In fact, there's a pipeline that transports heavy crude oil dating back to the 1950s that crosses uh, Nebraska. And uh, we drill through the aquifer to get to the minerals below. So the, the aquifer argument's kind of been thrown out as a red herring before, but you, know, you, you raise a good point. And, and as the former you know, hazmat safety guy for the US government, uh, the goal is zero spills, zero releases. But we also live in a world that we have to get from point A to B. We have to go about our lives. And today, for example, at 23 million barrels of refined products, that's your gasoline, your diesel fuel, jet fuel, kerosene, and crude oil is going to be moved by pipeline. 23 million barrels. Uh, sometimes that number is as high as, as 26. It comes down to 11.3 billion barrels a year. So when you look at the statistics, no other infrastructure network, uh, not cars, not trains, not, not uh, uh, vessels, have a better safety record. All right, 60 seconds left here. You brought up fuel, gasoline prices. Some say it's going to hold them down. Some say it does the opposite. Some fact people say that neither one is really true. What's the fact on gas prices for the American consumer and gas availability? So opponents of the pipeline have said that bringing more oil in uh, won't, won't affect prices. In essence, you can't drill your way to prosperity. Uh, the American energy renaissance is real. Uh, anyone who's gone to the gas pump lately knows that to be true. It is very simple, supply and demand. And there has not been another time in our history with record instability in the Mideast where gas prices are going down, not up, 
and that's completely and directly attributable to North American energy production growth. Very briefly then, 10 seconds, uh, will the Keystone Pipeline fuel that's coming through the pipeline affect American gas prices? I think ultimately it's a world market and uh, it will, it will uh, bring some spot prices down. Long term, it comes to world demand. All right. Well, the demand is we're going to be talking about the pipeline, I think, for quite some time and probably even next week. So, Brigham, I thank you for your time, and we're going to look forward to the next time we talk. All right. Thanks again for having me on. My pleasure. Thank you. Break, and we return with maybe the wealthiest and most corrupt sports organization on the planet, and they've gotten away with it again. And at 34 minutes after the hour, Warren Buffett looking to charge up investors with another acquisition. It's on Midpoint. Midpoint.